So uh, a few weeks back, I had the privilege of uh, meeting Dr. Michelle Reynolds at Bob and Jenny Eversall's house. They invited me over to get a chance to meet her. She's running for Franklin County Commissioner, uh, and uh, she'll share a little bit about that. But really, the reason I invited her to come here this morning is because I, I was just so impressed with her commitment to what we would refer to as faith-based faith -based businesses. Uh, Michelle is committed to social justice, and uh, what I really appreciated about her approach, first of all, she's doing something about it, which I, I like people of action, and, uh, but second of all, her, her comment was she wants to give a hand up versus a hand out, and so she's truly helping some people, and uh, we are really blessed to have her here this morning. I, I tell you, you're going to be blessed and encouraged, so let's welcome Dr. Michelle Reynolds here this morning. Thank you. Praise the Lord, church. Come on, praise the Lord, church. Come on, give God a hand, praise. Come on, that's good. Praise the Lord, Vineyard Columbus. My name is Michelle Reynolds. It is an honor and a privilege to be with you, to fellowship with you this morning. Dr. Dave, I thank you for the invitation to come um, and speak before your congregation. I have friends in the audience, the Elizondos and the Eversols, which we've been friends for a long time in the Lord, and I'm just grateful to be here to share with you this morning. Um, but I always feel like I'm at home because I'm in my daddy's house. I feel the love of God in this place. You all just should be commended because you facilitate an atmosphere where the love of God can just flow. And the Bible says how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And so I feel like I'm at home. I feel like I'm at home. I'm a pastor's wife. My husband will be here shortly. We just left our service. And so the name of our church is the Destiny Center. And we are a faith-based, non-denominational church. We love the Lord. Um, and we exhibit that in not only in ministry on Sunday and on Wednesday Bible study, but in the marketplace. And so we consider ourselves social entrepreneurs because it is very, very important that we do the work that God has sent us to do. So there's a scripture that's going to facilitate the foundation of what I'm going to share with you this morning. Um, and if you have your Bibles or your screens or your cell phones, um, however you want to obtain the word. If you would just turn with me to the book of Luke. And we're going to be in chapter 19. And it'll be verses 12 through 13. Luke chapter 19, 12 through 13. And when you have it, if you could say amen. And if you don't have it, say oh my. Amen. Amen. We can move forward. Amen. And so I'm going to be reading from the King James Version. And it said, He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy until I come. Occupy until I come. When I looked up the word occupy, that's going to be the, the key word that we're going to hone in on, occupy. In the dictionary, there's a few me meanings of the word occupy. And many of us know that occupy pretty much means to take up space. But that's not what this scripture is talking about, to just take up or fill a, a time or space. This particular scripture is talking about transacting transacting biz the business of the kingdom in the space that God has given you until he returns. Let me repeat that. Occupy means transacting the business of the kingdom until he returns. And so my question for you today is, how are you occupying the space? How are you transacting the business of the kingdom while Jesus has gone to, ki to the kingdom to fulfill and that he's going to return, how are you occupying your time, your space to transact the business of the kingdom, the ministry that God has given you? How are you using that time? How are you doing that? He has given a, all of us an assignment. This scripture is all about assignment. 
And he's given us the provision, whether it be a gift, a talent, whether it be resources, he's given each and every one of us something to do while he's away that we're supposed to do on earth. And a lot of times, you know, when I talk to fellow Christians and I say, you know, it's good that we fellowship. The Bible says forsake not to fellowship together with the believers. We are supposed to come to church. We're supposed to fellowship. We're supposed to go to Bible study. Those are the things that we're supposed to do as good citizens, right? But most of our time is not spent in the four walls of the church. Would you agree? Most of our time is actually spent in our occupations. Uh Uh-oh, occupy. Occupy is the root word for occupation. What are you doing in your occupation to transact the business of the kingdom? Amen. Amen. What are you doing in your occupation to transact the business of the kingdom? See, we're not supposed to just shut it off on Monday through Friday and turn it on on Sunday, right? We, if we be honest, we all have what's called a marketplace ministry. Whether that means that you are using what you do in your occupation to serve others, whether you're a business professional, whether you are a teacher, you're a hairstylist, I don't know what it is that you're doing, but God has given us each a gift, but he's given us that gift to transact the business of the kingdom. And a lot of times we are in the other definition, just occupying and taking up space, saying, God, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? We're just taking up space. That's the wrong definition. We have to get a new revelation that occupy until he comes means to transact the business of his kingdom, which means most of that is in the marketplace. So I am what you call a marketplace minister. Yes, we have a church, and yes, we fellowship on Sunday. That's when we get together and we praise God with the brethren. And on Wednesday, we learn about his word, and iron sharpens iron. But the business of the kingdom, the Bible says, the, business, the king's business requires haste. And a lot of times we are wasting our time because Monday through Friday, we're not ministering. We're not evangelizing. We're not telling people the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're not using the gifts and talents that he's given us to actually help save a life because we actually have the solution to the world's problems. He's given us that. So when he called me into the kingdom, he's called all of us. And some of us understand our purpose and some of us aren't quite there yet. But he's given us all. He said he gave the 10 servants 10 pounds. In this particular scripture, that means he gave them money. What I want you to understand is that he's invested in you. He's invested in you just like a a businessman. He's invested in you and he wants a return on investment. So what does his return look like? What is your life saying? How is it speaking? Where is the demonstration that God has put an investment on the inside of you? And what is the fruit Where's the evidence that you have what he's given you in a ministry? He called me to the book of, in the book of Isaiah 42, 6 and 7. You don't have to turn there. I know it by heart. He said, I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, and I will hold thine hand, and I will keep you and make you a covenant of the people, a light unto the Gentiles, to take the blind out of the prison house, to restore those that are blind and to take those that are out of the prison house, take them out. So I knew very early on that I am to be a deliverer and that he would keep me and he'd hold my hand. But there are people that are hurting. There are people that are in bondage. There are people that are in prison who are crying out to God and saying, God, I've been forgotten. I've been forgotten and I need hope and I need a way out. And if you are real, If you are real, how many times have we said that in a prayer? God, if you're real, show me. Show me who you are. And then the servants and the citizens of the kingdom, we're the ones that pull down those assignments. And we come and we show up. And that's what gives people hope and says, now I know, God, you're real. Because we took those assignments. But if we're sitting on our assignments and we're confused about what our purpose is, what our destiny is, what our gift is. Let me tell you something about your gift. Your gift is what you do the most that needs the least amount of energy. That's what your gift is. And the Bible says that your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men. He gives you provision for your gift. 
It takes the least amount of energy, but it's what you do the most and you enjoy. But that is the solution that the world needs. So when he called me, he called me out. The only part I take credit for is saying, yes, Lord, here I am. Here I am. I'll serve. I'll do whatever it is that you want me to do. And he quickly gave me the revelation. I want you to go into the prisons. And I want you to lead my people out because I care about their souls. And when they come out, they're going to need tangible help. And so my piece is to provide housing for those that have been broken by the criminal justice system, those that, for one reason or another, they are in the prison. But when they come out, they need to be restored. And so one of the things that my husband and I do in, in our marketplace ministry is to provide housing for formerly incarcerated individuals. We have housing here in Columbus that we started about 15 years ago, just as compassionate people, just as somebody who cared enough to open up a rental property because I'm in real estate and to say, look, there are people that are coming out of the system and so, for some reason or another, they can't go home. There is no home to go back to. They've either burnt too many bridges, they've been in prison so long that may, some of their folks have died, or they committed such a heinous offense that they can't even live with their loved ones. Maybe it was a sex offense. Maybe it was a murder. Maybe they can't go to a shelter. But they prayed, and they said, God, if you're real, if you'd help me. And God gave that assignment, and here I am, Lord. So when we first started that 15 years ago, started here in Columbus with just one property, and, and told the parole authority, look, we're willing to be compassionate landlords, someone that's willing to open up our doors for people who have barriers, um, and they can stay there. It's not necessarily a shelter, but it's something that for a nominal cost of just $10 a day, they can stay there, which means that even if someone didn't have a job, if they just went to a temporary agency, and when they worked for one day and got $30 for that day, they'd be able to afford a place to stay. And it was such a demand that within, one, within four months, we were able to go from one house to four houses. That's how much the demand was, and that was 15 years ago. Today, that same humble landlord business is now in five cities across the, the state of Ohio. Columbus, Akron. <laughs> Praise God, God, to God be the glory. Columbus, Akron, Mansfield, Chillicothe, and Cincinnati. We've housed over 1,000 formerly incarcerated individuals in those 15 years. We house on a daily basis 120 men, women, and youth coming out of the justice system. On a daily basis, 120 beds for housing. And then we help them by actually creating other businesses and hiring some of the very same people we house. But we didn't stop there because that's not the only plight, people that are, you know, formerly incarcerated. We have all kind of other bondages going on. Those that have been sex trafficked, women who have been sex trafficked, which I know this ministry is very compassionate about. We have a transitional housing program for those women as well. So we're not just looking at the abuser, we're looking at the abused. We also house our seniors because we care about those that are in, our, in the aging uh, population, the baby boomers. We have many baby boomers, and we have a lack of housing and affordable housing spaces here in this community. I don't know if you know this, but God gave the revelation that our city and our community is actually our modern-day Garden of Eden. And it's our responsibility to tend to our own garden. We are supposed to, to possess the land, but we're also supposed to dominate and subdue it. What are we doing as the body of Christ to tend to our own modern day Garden of Eden. That is our city, that is our county, that is our community, that is our state. All of this is just downloading revelation. And so we all have a role to play. We're not just the servants of the Lord. We are also citizens. We are citizens of a kingdom and we have to have a citizen mindset that it is our role and responsibility to tend to our garden because whatever we have in the garden is what we make it. So if we're going to have a lot of brokenness, if we're going to have um, a lot of um, crime and just all of these things, we know evil is always present with us, but we're the body of Christ. It's our job to tend to our garden. It's our job to take dominion. It's our job to stomp on the devil's head. It's our job to cast him out. That's our job. 
right? That's our job. That's our job. And our guard is down. And you know why our guard is down? Because many times we're struggling with just, who am I? What is my purpose? What is my destiny? What am I supposed to be doing? But here in the book of Luke, it says that we are to occupy. I don't care what it is you do. That just means whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. Whatever the gift the Lord gave you, find a need in the community and do it. Possess it. Be a person of action like Dr. David said, Pastor Dave. A person of action. We have to stop talking about what we're getting ready to get ready to get ready to do and do it. Right? We have to do it. We have to be doers of the word. And so what I, what the word that the Lord gave me for this body this morning was to pursue. It's to pursue. It is time to pursue your assignment. He's called every last one of you. And it's time to pursue the assignment, the ministry that he gave you. And you can start right in your occupation. Every last one of you has something that you do Monday through Friday. And then you come here and we worship the Lord on Sunday. You can start right in your occupation. I want to ask you a question. What if you could do what you love to fight what you hate? I want you to start there. What if you could do what you love to fight what you hate? That's what I do. That's how I started my businesses. I love real estate. And I hate homelessness. So what did I do? I took real estate and decided to help the homeless issue and decided to find a people who needed that as a a problem, a social problem that we could correct, that I could do my piece. I can just do my piece. I have lots of other businesses, but all of those are socially entrepreneurial. I have a coffee shop. My coffee shop, though, is not the traditional coffee shop. My coffee shops are in the prison. They're in the prisons. It's called Coffee Crafters. And what I do is I go inside four prison institutions and we train our inmates how to be baristas. So the same thing that Starbucks does, the same drinks they make, mochas, lattes, chai, smoothies, milkshakes, all those things, we train the inmates on the inside to be baristas. Well, why do we do that? Because we want to help them develop a workforce skill so that when they come out of prison that they are ready. Because a lot of us in this room, how many of you love coffee? Just raise your hand. Yeah, a lot of you. And a lot of you, when you go to get your coffee, that's one thing that you're not going to forget every day. Now, you may forget to kiss your husband or your wife or, you know, hug your, hug your kid, take your dog out. You may forget that, but you're not going to forget your cup of coffee, right? Coffee is a multi-billion dollar industry. And when you go to get your cup of coffee, you do not care if the person handing you that cup is a formerly incarcerated individual. You don't care. You want your coffee, right? So it made sense to me that if we can tap into this multi-billion dollar industry, even just 1%, then people with barriers, it it would not be a barrier to get a job or to create a coffee business. So we took that into the prisons and um, started coffee crafters. So after we trained them to be baristas, we actually set up coffee shops inside the prison and we monetize that that system where They actually buy um, coffee from a little storefront. We actually have coffee carts that are made by inmates in the prison. And um, it is monetized by other guards, by the inmates themselves, and by visitors who come to visit their loved ones. And then on the outside, we actually hire them to um, have um, a job in the coffee industry, whether it's with us or whether we place them in local coffee shops around the city. And we've done that um, at least four times placing them in coffee houses like Third Way Cafe, Lincoln Cafe, Roosevelt Coffee House. Um, But we've also helped others start their own business in coffee. And so that's what I'm talking about, finding a need and solving it with the very same gift that God has given you, doing what you love to fight what you hate. None of us have an excuse. Because we are, remember, occupy means to transact the business of the kingdom until he comes. Is that a new revelation for some of you all? Yeah. That's a revelation. All this time I thought occupy meant let's just take up space and wait for Jesus to come back, right? We're just waiting for him to come back so he's coming soon. We have something to do. The world needs us. 
We're letting our guard down. We have too much going on for our heads to be in the clouds. And so this year, I said yes to the Lord to run for office uh, for Franklin County Commissioner. (laughs) And not that I need another thing to do, God knows. (laughs) But how many of you know, when you're talking about um, a return on investment, We know that if you're faithful over a few things, God will make you ruler over many. And so he's looking for those that are faithful, and he always enlarges our territory. I love something that my husband said. This is my husband right here, Pastor Rick Reynolds. Honor you, man of God. I love something my husband said. He flows in Revelation. Um, Years and years ago, he said, God is a God of real estate. And he said, I can prove it to you because... From the beginning of time, he's always told us to possess the land, right? So for those of you that real estate's your profession, you're in a good profession. But he's always told us to possess the land. That is our inheritance as citizens of this kingdom. And this year, he told me that he wants me to be an influencer in government. The government is on his shoulders, right? The government belongs to him. And we need people in office who have the spirit of the Lord. We need people in office who are going to hearken into the voice of the Lord, that they are going to speak truth to power. Amen. They are going to speak truth to power. They are not going to be what we call on the take when you have uh, politicians who um, are corrupted by money or government or just trying to be somebody. That he, he doesn't want that. God wants somebody that's going to be on at the table that is going to say the things that need to be said, but not only that, that things can be set in order. This is less about me and it's more about him. So this year, this year, I'm running to be your next Franklin County Commissioner. For those of you that live in Franklin County, um, you, my name is on your ballot. Um, I'm running because with my experience in not only working in the business sector and the nonprofit sector, and having experience in the private sector, we realize that all of those sectors need to come together at the table to be stakeholders. The government cannot solve all of our problems. If we think that they can, that's why we're failing. They cannot continue, to, they cannot continue that role. They need us. They need us. And so I am someone who thinks uh, out of the box. Um, one of the other businesses that my husband and I Um, do in real estate. We're the ones building the shipping container apartments on the east side of Columbus called Cargo Miniums. Um, We're doing that as an affordable housing. Thank you. We're doing that as an affordable housing solution because here in Franklin County, we literally have a poverty crisis. We have one in four individuals that are living in poverty in this community. It is larger now than it was in the recession of 2008. In 2008, Franklin County had 10% of its population living in poverty. Today, we have 17%, which is over the national average. The national average is 12.9%. That's a problem. One in four individuals, which means 25% of 1.4 million people in Franklin County, cannot afford to keep a roof over the head or food on the table. We have a food insecurity crisis where a lot of our kids are only getting nutritious meals when they go to school because the parents can't afford, you know, we're in that um, bracket where you may not get food stamps, but you just get a little bit too much money to be able to get that, but you also can't afford to feed your family. We also live in food deserts. We have grocery stores in major areas like the Northland area that are actually leaving neighborhoods. And so we're not able to provide nutritious meals in our inner city neighborhoods. We also have um, a a crisis where our children are dying before the age of one. Infant mortality rates are very, very high here in Franklin County, especially with the African-American population. Our babies are likely to die three times more than any other babies, and it's because of the nutrition. They're, They're talking about mercury being put in some of the milk and some of the formula and things like that. And so it's not just sudden infant death syndrome. There is something going on. And we, the church, need to, we, the church, need to stand up and tend to our modern day Garden of Eden. Because too many snakes and serpents have got into our communities, our cities, our counties, our territory. On our watch, 
because we don't understand the sign of the times. God said pursue. He said pursue. I don't care what it is he's calling you to do. Pursue it. This is the hour to pursue. Remember, your gift is what you do the most that takes the least amount of energy. And that is where you start. Your occupation, what you do in your nine to five, outside of the four walls of the church, that's where you start. Today is the day for you to really look at what is it that I do? How can I do what I love to fight what I hate in my occupation? Because your assignment, your mandate is to occupy until he comes. Thank you so much for having me this morning. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Wow. Yeah. Woo! Appreciate her. I'll tell you. Amen. Amen.